The Green Hell is one of the most challenging road tracks on the planet. This is how I help the student find over 3 seconds per lap in this huge 8 minute track. It's very difficult to study corner per corner, so when I'm working with students on this track, I focus on main points that could be applied to all of them. And you are probably making the same mistake he is, because these are the most common traps we fall onto when learning the Nürburgring Notch Life. I also show some tips on how to maximize track usage on entry and how to prioritize corners to make the best lap time you can. This video is sponsored by the Motor Racing Checklist. More about it at the end of this video. As always, I like showing a few moments of the onboards before my explanation so you guys can kind of think a little bit what is it that he's doing wrong. So if you think of something by watching these bits, write it down in the comments before you watch the lesson and then you can compare and edit your comment with what you learned. I can already kind of give you a spoiler. He's doing the same mistake in every corner entry. Same thing here, and here, and here. He kept doing the same mistake on the whole 8 minute lap, so I'm gonna save you this and we're gonna go straight to the explanation. I think you can probably gain at least 2 seconds with just a few mindset changes that apply right. to most corners. Think of this track as a rally stage. What really matters is plenty in advance and getting good exits. What I see a lot is you losing way too much time on entry, not being able to put the power down because you're not optimizing the initial conditions of the corner. Remember from my course, I always say the initial conditions of the corner are the most important. They are going to determine everything else. Even before you start braking, I see how much time you're losing. Like literally before I see you applying the brakes, I know you're like three tenths off. You're gonna be three tenths off on that corner. It's a little bit related to vision. You're just not, not having, not planning in advance enough to have the mental space to optimize the track usage on entry. Most corners, you're always giving three tires width on entry. You're not all the way to the white line. And then you carry a little bit too much speed, you understeer, and you get on power after the apex. So you lose a lot of time on the exit. All of that because you're not using those three tires. So it's it's you have to think ahead. Track usage wise, there will be some corners where it's actually easy to use on the track and to maximize the track usage. Let's call them easy spots. And any corner that is preceded by a straight line is an easy spot. So if you have a straight line before the corner, you have to use all the track. You have to go all the way to the white line because that's an easy spot. Mm -hmm. Some okay. other places like the three apexes, it's a little bit more difficult, it's still doable, but more difficult, that's fine. Most people will also not maximize there, but the straight line ones, you have to. So again, recap what I did so far. Exits are more important than entry when it comes to, to carrying speed out of the corner. And you have to use the track, but that not that comes from thinking ahead and already in your mind like, okay, the next corner is that one and I need to optimize the initial conditions and I need to use all the track and I need to think ahead. I need to look forward so I can go all the way to that real white line. This is what I'm talking about, see? And then look, on cold tires, the car is under theory. You should never accelerate on an entry. Look at this, you're touching the throttle with zero brakes. This will cause severe understeer on cold tires. This car is so under theory that you should always use the brakes to rotate until the apex, like no exceptions. And because of that, you see how the car is just going wide. See how you're painting the track with the front, with the right front. And then same, you start braking. And then here you even do it. This is good, but then again, the car's super sensitive to what you do in the corner before on cold tires. So you you overheat it here, and then on the next corner, it's definitely going to continue to understeer, and then you accelerate slowly, which induces even more understeer, and then now you're painting the track with the front left. So it is all like about surface temperature management. Like make sure that you steer less and use more the brakes. This corner you can aggressively double apex it like you do in spa, you know, the long Bruxelles right-hander. So what I actually do in this corner, I'm gonna hit the first apex here. 
I'm already hitting the first apex. You're still not. You see? I'm hitting right here. I'm one full car to the right. And then by the time we get here, I'm literally on the middle of the track. So I'm doing a super aggressive double apex approach because this, this corner, although it is 180 degrees, it is super long. You spend a lot of time inside the corner. You can do the deceleration deeper into the corner. So just turn in early. Like break almost diagonally into the corner. Apex super early. And then the car is going to be thrown out. And then by the time you get here, you're going to be pointing back and you're going to also get a better exit. If you actually do a double apex approach when, when you have to do it, you gain time everywhere, both on entry and exit. Let me show you that real quick. Here, look at the line that I take. See how early I get there. And then wide, 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 wide. That's that's the apex. Look at that, how I'm on the middle of the track. And then right now, look at how my line is straight for the exit. I can carry so much more speed. So I gain both time on entry here by breaking later and deeper into the corner. And then I concentrate a lot of rotation here and then I get a much better exit. That here, four tenths, maybe half a second. So this corner here, just this corner. You see, it's an eight minute lap, but just this corner on the GP part, that's four tenths, maybe half a second that you're losing because you're not double apexing it. Same thing, easy spot. Why? Because it's a long straight. So you have time to carefully position your car to use all the track. And that's at your level, that's a tenth. That's what I'm saying. Like you're, you're 2.8K rating. So you need to use this at this point because that's going to be worth, uh, uh, it's going to be free time for you. You know what to do with the extra track usage here. But just by going there, you're naturally going to know how to benefit because of, of your driving level and you're going to gain a free tenth. So, oh good here, that's the right line. Over slowing a tiny bit, never go on top of this curb. Uh, the secret for this corner is you have two stages. After you turn in here, now you see how we can see a lot of the track and it's going up? That's compression. There's a lot of grip here, the car's going to rotate a lot. But then, see, see a lot here? And now you can see a lot of the track after. So that means on the second part, it's falling and you're going to have a lot less grip. So you want to concentrate a lot of your rotation. Like in a situation like that, you want a 70% of the rotation to be here on the compression because the car is only going to be capable of doing a lot less here. And then you're going to be thrown all the way to the white wall. Of course, you overslowed a little bit, so you didn't feel that inertia throwing the car. But by the time you carry more speed here, you have to concentrate more here. It's like ah, a lot more. And then woo, I'm falling and just like not having any grip remaining and the car is going to be thrown wide. Same thing. As soon as you exit this, you look forward. You want to kind of go around the end of this guardrail and you want to use more of the track on under braking here. Be careful under braking here because it's you're falling. So there's a lot less grip. You are you are braking less. So this is good. Um, yeah, but that's just free track usage. Just changing that so far, we just entered the forest. And just by just by seeing like your previous corners on the GP, that's probably already one second. Yeah, miss this curb. These curves are extremely high. And then here, this is another very important one. It gives you a lot of lap time. This corner, the actual corner, you're gonna look at this sign here, the two kilometer sign, and then we have this corner. This corner is not flat. So you need to prepare this corner. You're gonna look at that sign and you're gonna go wide because you wanna be on the white line on the turning point, which is here. So here, that's how much space you're, you're not using. And this is the difference between doing this corner almost flat and having to brake for it. And you are braking for it. If you have like good tire temperature, good track conditions this should be flat and in order to make it flat you have to be touching the white line here so it's all about that initial condition you see i'm always coming back to the same topic initial conditions of the corner on, on a corner entry then you keep going same thing yeah let's put a a, a measurable lap time one tenth per corner that you miss the track entry usage here what really matters this corner is not necessarily this braking zone, it's this corner. This corner matters a lot because after this, you're gonna be carrying this speed all the way until more or less here. So that means you have to optimize the entry here. Um, so what I like to do here is, first of all, use this, and then you wanna lay apex this. Like consider this 
more or less like a corner, more or less like a braking zone. But you really don't want to apex that early because then your car is thrown all the way to the middle here and then you can't have a fast right-hander. You want to have your car here. And then this is so much faster. See? Oh, you're starting to turn in here. There's a lot of time to gain here. Same thing, same thing. This is an easy corner here. This is not a corner. This is just a deceptive kink to put you offline. What you want to do is stay on the inside here as much as you can to the right because the actual braking zone and the actual corners are the next two. So stay here. You see, in all that, it's always the same topic because you're probably not looking far ahead enough and planning and optimizing your line for what's coming in the future, in the next two seconds. Same thing here, see? You're changing direction on the middle of the corner, on the track. What I want is stay here and then maximize this one. So let's analyze the sector on my lap. Okay, so let's see this. See, 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 see? Exactly what I told you. The white line is aligned to my dash, to, to the right of my dash light. Look, 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 look. So it's an easy spot. So you see how gently I was moving to the right? Because it's an easy spot. So you can you can have time to think, you see? Okay, uh, a little bit right, 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 right. Okay, now, same thing. White line very close to the dash here. And then really using as much track as possible on the inside as well here. And also same thing. Make sure you exploit this. Always super close to the track limits. Now let's talk about this one. So lots of rotation lots of rotation here that's all that's most of my rotation done now inertia is gonna prevent my car to keep rotating and my car is gonna shift wide you see how it falls and it has no grip now okay exit this corner my mind is already thinking i need to go around the orange guardrail to use other track whoa you see so i was I, this was planned i can't react to it i have to plan in advance then i use a lot more track than you here not using the curb exiting as fast as possible now now let's see that the flat one right so look that's it by the two board you have to be on the left i'm probably not using all the track there's probably like half a tire width more still and i'm doing a tiny bit of lifting so there's probably like two three hundreds that i missed there then using the other track now let's see the next one so okay using the other track on the right then really late late apexing you see how much to the left i am preparing the next one and then boom carrying as much speed as possible and then trying my best to stay to the left here i'm probably a full car more to the left than you and then really late apexing this one and staying a little bit more now i'm more or less three quarters to the right and then finally having a very good line for this one then again same thing no time to think. Bring the car as quickly as possible to the left. Prepare the next one. It's all about initial conditions. Initial conditions. Initial conditions. And then here, really use this curb. You have to use this curb. It's going to pull you to the right. By the time you get here, you're like a lot more to the right. And you're going to have a much better line on this one. Same thing for this one. Look, track usage. Use all of it. It's an easy spot because you have a straight line before. So just take your time to think in advance. Same thing. And then you're, you have to turn in way earlier too. Like if you use more of the track, turn in earlier. So you really aim to use this these little rocks here to really pull the car and prepare you for a much better left-hander that's gonna lead into a long straight. So you have to carry a lot of speed here. So same thing here, look at that. This corner, you're braking, right? If, if you're decelerating, you, you need to use the white line. Just by staying on the white line here will give you so much so much advantage you, you need to be more way more to the left same thing same thing this corner is not flat the next one is not flat so you can't be here you have to be all the way to the white line to maximize it and then yeah you see you're going wide here and you're like oh my god I'm, i need to turn and everything and that's the reason you break late because you were thinking about still finishing the the left hander so if you had used this you would have had a much better line you would late apex this one and then the car would be a little bit more to the left and you would have more mental space and time to plan your brake and you would break earlier so you see this snowball effect gets crazy just because of the track usage from that corner and then you have to really 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 cut this curb 
and then by the time you get here I'm generally a lot more to the left and then this one this line is right this line is correct oh good I don't like using the skirt I think you can probably carry a little bit more speed and miss it because uh, it's way too high like it transfers the weight too much and you, you don't have a uh, stable exit so you see like you need to be like this but not here here because that's not a corner so you see like here exactly like let's let's see let's see how it looks on, from the cockpit here look at that that's how you, you should be here and then double left here remember from my course the double left and double right so you exit here you want to be by the time you exit this corner right here you should you should already be here so you gain time on the corner before and on entry for the next one big 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 one here so you exit this you go here you see this the, these rocks that's where you should be look at where you are the next corner you have to you have to break 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 so if you're decelerating that much you can decelerate less by using the track and then same thing here very important that's what this one because the you're exiting uphill forever <laughs> the straight is like huge here so if you if you carry like two kilometers per hour more on this exit you're gonna be like a tenth and a half faster throughout the end of the of the straight here like uh, look at how much time and then the next one same thing and then so here what i like to do is project my line by the time i turn in so instead of breaking here i go to the middle of the track and i break this way so i can by the time i break I find myself in the right spot, you see? And then, same thing. See, you have to be here. The turning point is this curve. I'm, I'm only analyzing the track usage, same thing. And then... This is good. This is what you want. Oop. Think ahead. It's, again, it, you can do it. It's just because it's almost like you're in a bubble. You have to pop the bubble look forward expand your your mind's eye like you're you're looking for you're planning ahead you're thinking ahead 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 always and then same thing here look this is this was good and then you move back to the right and out of the curve you have to stay 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 and then you turn in at the at this triangle here big one you want to stay 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 boom when you see the change of color here, and then finally the curve there, that's your turning point. So look at where you are here. This one is great. Track usage is great. Then you apex. You want to run wide here. You want to stay wide because this kink here is not a corner. So it's, we have this corner, right? Then we have this kink. Don't think this is a corner. You want to stay on the white line until here. Because that's your turning point to the actual corner, which is this one here. And this is not flat, definitely not flat. So you, you see, the turning. this is the turning point, not a corner, corner. And then right here, you want to be all the way to the left. So that's your homework. Hyper focus on this. White line, break a tiny bit earlier, break a little bit less, and make sure you don't front lock so you can get the car to point. And then finally getting the best exit possible. Sim racing is growing more and more, and it's bringing real life racers and sim racers together. This is making the competition level rise like I've never seen it before. So if you want to become that competitive, the secret is in the driving technique more than equipment. My professional driving technique course, the Motor Racing Checklist, already has over 3,000 drivers, including real life drivers and professional eSport drivers, just so you know how good it is. I made this course after coaching over 2,000 drivers in one-to-one -one live sessions and it contains all the advanced concepts techniques and exercises that i've developed with my students over all these years of coaching it's perfect for any simulator racing games and also for real life drivers wanting to use the simulator to improve their real life driving technique this course is about car handling skills and the goal is to make you find better lap times and consistency you will learn how to prevent and induce specific behaviors and learn how to feel them earlier so you can predict what's happening with the car 
professional precision. By the way, this course has a money back guarantee with no questions asked. So if you don't improve, you get your money back and you can join my Discord to read reviews and ask any questions. Join the course now and I will see you on track.